Ali has always lived on the island of Mayotte in the Indian Ocean. As an agent for the Water and Forest Department, he spends day and night protecting the marine reserve of Sazile. Mayotte is located a few miles off the northeast coast of Madagascar. Part of the Comoro archipelago, the island has been French since 1843. The archipelago, discovered 500 years ago by Arab sailors, was nicknamed Jazair al-Kamar, or Islands of the Moon, by Sinbad the Sailor. In time, Kamar was transformed into Comoro. Marine turtles are the treasure of Mayotte. Nearly a thousand of them are raised domestically here on the southeast side of the island in the Sazile Park. Living fossils of sorts, these angels of the sea, are survivors from another geographical time and contribute to the magic of the site. Pursued avidly by man, these turtles have become very rare. Entrusted with their protection, Ali looks after them faithfully. His job has become an all-consuming passion. My work consists of banding, monitoring, protecting, and keeping the green turtle and the hawksbill turtle in the Sazile Park, so as to do scientific research. What kind of research? To know exactly where the green turtle and the hawksbill turtle lay their eggs, how they lay them, where they go after laying them, and the best way to preserve them. The beaches of Sazile are a favorite spot for turtles. Here they can lay their eggs without being disturbed. Ali is setting up an observation mission that will last for several days. For him, it is one of the most privileged and necessary moments of scientific research. In his two years with the Water and Forest Department, Ali has often carried out these missions alone, with only a primitive campsite and basic tools. But even if human resources and materials are still not abundant in Mayotte, increasing sensitivity on the part of the authorities to the plight of the marine turtles has already led to some improvements. 20 forest agents will be arriving expressly to lend a hand in the anti-poaching patrols, and three agents have been permanently designated to survey the turtles. It is in the dark shelter of night that the turtles choose to lay their eggs. Thanks to his infrared binoculars, Ali can spot them easily. After having painfully heaved herself to the very top of the beach, the turtle seeks a dry place to make her nest. With her legs, she kicks the sand backwards in an effort to bury herself completely, an operation that will take about an hour. Once the hole she digs is completed, she lays, on average, 100 white eggs with soft shells. Mm -hmm. 
Ali waits until she's arrived at midpoint in the laying of her eggs to put on the ban, because it is then that the turtle is most tired and therefore the most docile. The banding of turtles is the essential tool that permits the identification of species and characteristics. It enables the researchers to identify all the females individually when they come back up on the beach. Thanks to these markings, this turtle can be spotted and studied for the rest of its life. The green turtle can measure up to 1 meter 50 in length and can weigh up to 275 kilograms. Ali records each detail on an identity card. This process enables the researchers to record the number of births and even track eventual migrations towards other oceans. Sometimes turtles go on spectacular journeys. One of them, banded in Europe, was found on the coast of Mozambique. After the laying, the turtle gently pushes sand over the eggs in order to totally cover the nest. Exhausted, she then returns to the ocean. Some turtles have come up on the beach looking for a spot, but not finding one, track back down to the ocean. Ali decides to tag them anyway. At sunrise, two months after the eggs were laid, the baby turtles begin to surface. Instinctively, they move towards the sea. Only the strongest will not be eaten as delicacies by predatory birds and only the luckiest will escape hordes of hungry fish. Out of a thousand baby turtles, only one will actually reach the adult age of 15, the reproductive age. Once they reach the water, only female turtles will one day return to land. The males will never again leave the sea. Ali's work also consists of finding turtle nests. Using a stick, he finds those where the eggshells are broken in order to count the number of births. Ten meters from the beach, Ali finds a nest of eggs that hatch during the night. He clears away the sand to get at the eggs an operation that allows for a little one stuck in his overly humid cradle to be saved. On average, a turtle will lay her eggs three times at 13-day intervals. Often she lays them in practically the same spot. Some turtles lay eggs up to 11 times in five months on the same beach. Ali fills out another card on which he marks the date, location, and number of eggshells. Turtles don't always choose the ideal spot. Sometimes they lay their eggs too close to the shore where strong tides can flood the nests and destroy them. In this manner, Ali discovers dozens of baby turtles that will, to his great dismay, never see the light of day. The natural mortality rate of turtles is high. In addition to the strong tides, baby turtles have other enemies, such as crabs and rats. 
They plow a path in the sand, reach into the heart of the nest and devour the eggs and newborns. A few meters from the shore, turtles mate during the day in complete freedom. Mating is extremely competitive and several males frequently fight over the same female. Waters and forests have always interested me. For me, the ocean means swimming. When I was little, I loved to swim, even though they kept telling me it was dangerous. I was always in the water, I didn't care. And the forest to me means the countryside. My parents were farmers, and so I spent a lot of time outdoors when I was little. It was something that I already knew. These two words, water and forest, represent a lot for me. The day I joined the water and forest department, they asked me to work outdoors with the turtles. It wasn't a problem because I loved nature. And I want to work to protect nature. The rich underwater fauna in this part of the Indian Ocean makes Mayotte a truly aquatic paradise. An immense coral reef splendidly belts in the island and protects it. The lagoon, with a surface that spans 1,500 square kilometers, is one of the largest in the world. Each week, Ali and Pierre patrol the marine reserve of the lagoon. It gives them a chance to say hello to the local fishermen, who still use traditional methods. Pole fishing and dragnet fishing are always authorized. During these patrols, however, the encounters are not always friendly. Hello. I saw you diving here. What are you doing? And if I told you that you're poaching? You have a harpoon gun and you're poaching. It's against the law to hunt crawfish with a harpoon gun. Fine then, I'm going to confiscate your gun and take your name down. Hand me your gun that you left over there. Merci. Fifty 
Fishing with a harpoon gun is strictly forbidden for ecological reasons, since the most beautiful and often the most reproductive specimens would be eliminated. Poachers risk a fine of up to 4,000 francs, and their boat can be confiscated. Many tourists would be happy to bring back turtle shells as exotic wall decorations. Turtle shells are in great demand because people make boxes or spectacle frames out of them. This confiscated loot was seized before it could bring back large sums of money to its clandestine dealers. But the turtle is also hunted for its meat. A kilogram of meat is sold on the island for between 10 and 50 francs. Nevertheless, popular belief is that the Maorians put an evil eye on anyone who eats turtle. I would like to say to the inhabitants of Mayotte that they need to consider the turtle as a friend. The turtle is one of the most important treasures of Mayotte and should be seen as a friend and not a meal. Richness should be understood in terms of nature, of natural beauty, rather than killing turtles for money or to eat them. We should try to save nature, not destroy it. We need to preserve nature. The Maorians have preserved most of their traditions. They love to tell ancient tales and also to celebrate all of life's important events. Celebrations are popular on the island. Even though Islam has considerable importance on the archipelago, where about 99% of the population is Muslim, some animist practices are still observed. Women are an element of stability and play an important role in Mahorian society. They have more power than is usually accorded to women by Islam. Ali loves hiking through the paths of this tropical paradise, Mount Chungi. On this natural reserve, one can find not only plants, but also animals that date back to ancient times. A profusion of rare species like the maki, cousins of the Malagasy lemurs, who live in groups in the trunks of trees they've hollowed out. Normally wild, they are easily approachable here because they feel safe. Ali is particularly fond of these little monkeys with fox-like snouts and regularly comes to feed them bananas. In this far-off land, the abundance of wild fruit is also the delight of the flying foxes, a type of giant bat that is exclusively vegetarian.
The ascension of Mount Chungi can only be made on foot because only pedestrians are permitted. A chance for Ali to reap the benefits of this exuberant and fragrant nature and to contemplate the superb panoramas of the island and its lagoon. I love my job and I will love it all my life. It makes me happy because it's about saving my island and its natural life and that's important for me. Serving my island by protecting its nature makes me happy. I don't know if one day I'll do something else. I don't think so. I hope not. But as of today, I want to keep on doing what I'm doing. Banding the turtles, swimming with the turtles, living with them, everything that has to do with turtles, without forgetting the rest of nature, the fish, the forests, the protection of the lagoon. Maorian legend recounts that upon a day of famine, the fish gathered together to discuss who would be eaten. They asked each other, who is not here at this meeting? The turtle. Then it is the turtle that will be eaten. At that point, the turtle did not yet have a shell. But the turtle came and said, you decided to eat me simply because I was the only one not there? It's as though you said that God was not there. The turtle then began to recite the verses of the Quran, and a shell descended on its back. From that day forward, no fish has been able to devour this goddess of the sea. As long as there are men like Ali to guard the treasure of Mayotte, the legend of the Sazile turtles will never die.